Welcome back to the channel. Now, I know I've been on hiatus. Your girl is Hollywood now. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I've been away recording, doing a production deal, so I am back. Thank you for patiently waiting for a therapist perspective because you know, everybody named Mama can get a mic, can do something on Amazon, but not everybody can get a master's de degree in clinical psychology. So I am Denise Brady. I'm a licensed, licensed marriage and family therapist with over 15 years of experience. So I came to give y'all a therapist perspective on Monica and Steven. Okay. Now I see both sides here, but before I get into it, make sure you smash that like, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you already hit them comments and let me know you, where you from you in the chats. Okay. <sighs> Get you something to drink, something to snack on, because we came to eat today. We came to feast as a family on these couples. Now, looking at them, you know, if you watch my first video, my set of videos on Love is Blind, I said what? Opposites. I said Monica was trying to fit him in a box. And the more I watched these episodes, I was able to see Monica is over here. And he is more down here. And there is nothing wrong with that. Okay. There is nothing wrong with someone being more established in the relationship, having more a different lifestyle and the other person not being used to that. But it gets to a point where your lifestyle are comp completely different that it gets in the way of the relationship. Not only that, I feel like Monica was trying to fit him into a box that she had in her mind. There were just so many to me, red flags, warning signs that they were not going to work. And I felt like before they even left Mexico, he knew he couldn't live up to her standards. Okay. He knew it wasn't going to work, but this is someone who has to me from a therapist perspective, a lost sense of self. I think that he does not really know who he is. He's trying to fit into something that other people want or need from him. And this is the exact replica probably of some of the things he's gone through in his life thinking that maybe he was white, European, find out actually you got a little bit of chocolate in you. Okay. And now I'm like, who am I really? And now as I'm finding out that information, I'm trying to figure myself out, discover who am I, who I thought I was, who am I today? I go on this show. Okay. And there are some people who think he should have never been on the show. I'm not here to really say that, but I think there was so much that in the pods, they got caught up in, they didn't think about real life. And so let's start with the scene of them having lunch or dinner or something. Um, and he starts to get emotional about living up to her standards and not wanting to disappoint. I feel like there is a theme of disappointment in this man's life. And he is carrying that with him into relationships, career decisions, and the way he moves in life. OK, and so you have an individual who does not have the clearest sense of self and a woman who has an idea and sense of what she wants lost. And I know what I want. So you're going to fit into it. OK, so he is having this moment where I think the light bulb hit him. It ain't going to work. I'm going to disappoint her. He didn't even know what a Louis Vuitton was. OK, that was another red flag. Okay. Now, if you can't afford these things, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't even rock no Louis. I got a, a closet for, full of uh, Teflars that I don't even wear. I want to sell them because I don't even wear them. But not everyone's into that brand lifestyle where you have to have all that. But Monica to me is. Okay. So reality has set in. And I've seen her in different scenes have like this stank face. Mm. Like the ick face. OK, and now with this ick face, I see it over and over again when they're in the bed together, when he brings up this weird conversation about, you know, peeing being sucked. You could just tell he didn't fit in. OK, and I think he knew that. And I think Monica at times knew that. But for the sake of I want to get married, for the sake of maybe herself, not wanting to like a failure, not wanting to disappoint both these people, not wanting to disappoint other people in their lives that they went along with it. So there's just this fear of abandonment coming from Steven. 
fear of disappointment. But I think also from Monica, there's a fear of probably also some um, fear of disappointment. Okay, so you have both these people who I don't think they have the clear sense of self going into a relationship, going into a marriage. Now, on the outside of this experiment, mm -mm, they would never work. You can't have someone who has a lost sense of self and someone who has, to me, magical thinking about what they want, this checklist, this box for this man to fit in. It was never going to work. OK, and I'm also curious about why um, his family didn't want to come on the show. I think that could have been an element. I noticed in these three episodes, I'm wondering about the men. OK, and why the men's families did not want to be a part of it. And for the sake of Monica, she saved her, her dad some heartache. OK, but there's always something. My little spy sense is always like, where, where are the men's families? Where are the friends? Okay. And I'm going to get into Rams in a, in a whole nother video, but I got some things coming, some, some things percolating in my mind. Okay. Now let's go into intimacy. Okay. Now when Monica realized he was having doubts, she pulled back on the intimacy. Okay. And to me, it felt like a punishment. So since you're not sure about me, you don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to pull back. No more the cootie cat. You're not going to get no more of that. Okay. And to me, I am on the side. I'm not on anyone's side, but I, to me, it felt like a punishment where I think it could have been a conversation. Maybe we didn't see the conversation, but Hey, I'm giving you a part of my body when you are not sure if you really want to be with me, but was it that he really didn't want to be with her or was it, he was unsure about the marriage part. See, that's the thing I'm kind of like, but it just felt like the intimacy part being pulled back was more of a punishment. And that I didn't like, but I want to know you guys' thoughts. Do you think it was a punishment or more? It was like, I'm not going to give myself to you in that way anymore because you don't know about us. OK, so that was also going through my mind and going more into intimacy. Let's talk about kinks. OK, and kink shaming. OK, now. There are some people who like kinks, who have different kinks, okay? There are some people who are into just basic Caucasian sex, okay? And from this relationship, I was getting that Monica was into basic Caucasian sex. Now, if you know that, let me know in the comments where I got that from. But yeah, I think Monica was giving basic Caucasian sex. And I think that he was into kinks and... Even there were different parts and scenes where he said, yeah, if you came in and you just told me, take it off and you're going to do whatever to me based off of dominance, I would be down for it. And she's like, oh, I would never do that. It was just more, she's more conservative in the bedroom and he wants to experiment and do different things. And I think it's very difficult to be with someone who is into just basic, you know, Caucasian sex when you are into kinks. And I hate that the internet has kink shamed him. Now, going into this whole text messages thing, everybody named Mama is talking about it. Everyone wants to make dollars. Everyone wants to get clicks and views. But when it comes down to it, they were private messages. He should not have been doing that in a relationship. But I think to me it has gone to the point where people are kink shaming and exposing the messages. Now, you're into whatever you're into. OK, I don't think people's personal business, like what you're really into, unless you are the person saying it and speaking it should really be broadcasted. But it just felt like a, ooh, it's salacious. Ooh, let's talk about it. Let me get views. Let me break down these people. That's what it comes down to every season about this show is that people forget these are human beings behind what you're seeing, what you're binge watching. They are people. And people are human and people make mistakes, but it just kind of feels like, oh, let's run with it. Let's expose the messages. Now, I think once he was in Mexico, he knew he didn't want to be with her anymore. He knew it wasn't going to work. OK, and I think he should have just ended things. But once again, capitalism. They're making money off being on this show. Each day they continue, they're making a check, they're making more money. So I think that also played a pivotal role into it. But I think he should have just ended things. OK, but it just felt like 
she was disgusted, not in a way that's disgusted with the text, with the behaviors. I thought it was more disgust in a, ew, you're into that type of deal. Okay. And this is why I think that different, there are different layers to intimacy, what you're into, what you want in the bedroom, what you need. Okay. Should be talked about more in the pods so we can know if we're on the same page. If I know you went to scat play, I'm not into scat play. Okay. If you went to pegging, I know for sure it's a no go. So I don't want to move this past anything more than talking through this wall. But I think we've seen over and over again on this season that people don't have conversations about those kind of things until they get caught creeping. Okay. So I think that he should have ended things, but when it comes to their relationship, you just have one person to me who has more of an anxious attachment style, which would probably be um, Steven. And then you have Monica who has more of a, I don't think it's anxious. I'm still trying to figure out what her attachment style is, but it, to me, it's not secure. Um, I don't want to say it's disorganized. It doesn't feel like it's avoidant. So I'm still trying to figure it out, but I just don't think they were a match. I never thought that it was just him trying to fit inside of her box and I think when you try and force people inside of a box and in a relationship, it explodes because it's only so long you can fit inside of a box before what your real needs are, your, your real interests. You can only fit into somebody's modes for so long. And I just hate that people forget that these are human beings. These are people. Once the show is over, they still have to continue their lives. But yeah, they were never going to work different culturally, different sexually lifestyles are completely different. They don't really have much in common to be married. Okay. I think there was a moment where she just got caught up in the, I want to be married. I want to be a bride. I want the wife title. Okay. But there were just a lost sense of self, the fear of abandonment, the fear of, a, the fear of disappointment, Stephen just trying to acquiesce. Now the whole Venmo comment thing, girl, get your money. She ate with that one. Get your money because I'm not trying to chase you. I'm not no bill collector. Pay me my monies, my coins before you dip out. Okay. Cause I never want to see you again, but I need my money. Okay. So I heard that in the background, that little bloop. Did y'all hear that little ding? Yeah. That was that demo here in that account. Okay. But let me know your thoughts about them. I just think it was never going to work. I don't believe in kink shaming. If you're not into the whole kink thing, don't shame your partner. Don't shame other people just because it ain't something you ain't interested in. But these are just my thoughts as a therapist. So let me know. Agree? Disagree? Hit those comments. Hit that subscribe. Smash that like. And of course, I got notes. So we got another video to get to. All right. Bye.